Hey guys, this is Jackie, your nerdy crafter. Now, I'm no marine biologist, but that doesn't stop me from admiring the deep sea. Although I do really get seasick, I can't be on a boat without getting really, really nauseous. So being on a cruise is definitely not an option. And another thing about the ocean is that it's scary because we just don't know what's in there. I mean, there are so many species that we have yet to discover. Isn't that fascinating? Since so many of you really liked the polymer clay and resin combination tutorial, I figured I'd give it another shot. So, for this week, you guys will learn how to make a small jellyfish tank. Now, if you look under the jellyfish, you'll see that it kind of looks gooey. And that's because I've added some cotton there to give it that effect. Pretty nifty, eh? That was so Canadian of me. Now, for this project, I highly suggest that you don't blow out the bubbles in your resin. The only thing I would have done is maybe pop that one, but I would keep all the rest because they do look like floating plankton and little particles that would exist under the ocean. And I love this project because it's so darn easy and it looks awesome. Here's what you'll need for this project. White or translucent clay, black, rounded or pointy tools, a mold, blue food coloring, rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip to clean up your piece, a cutter, Optionally, you can use the back end of a chopstick or the back end of a pen. Cotton. And finally, your resin kit. Now, many of you ask me where do I get this from, and I got this from Michael's, but I'm sure you can also find it at a hardware store. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is show you guys two different ways how to make two different jellyfish. For the first one, you're either going to need the back part of a chopstick or a pen. Now, make a small ball with your white or translucent clay, place it on the top tip of your chopstick, push it down so that it makes a dome. Now remove it, and now you have a hollow dome. Now with your translucent clay again, make really thin snakes, then you're going to place them on the inside of your dome. Feel free to make them extra long, bend them in half, and then put them inside. That way you're cutting your work in half. Once you have something that looks like this, with your fingers just bring them and tame them a little bit, like so. Now take your rubbing alcohol and Q-tip and clean it up, just in case you got dirt specks. So here's our first jellyfish, now for the second one, and you're going to start with exactly the same method. If you have a hard time with the back of a chopstick, feel free to take a ball tool, like so. Now for the tentacles on this one, you're going to roll out the same colored clay as you did for the body. Roll it out into a thin snake, but a little thicker than what you did previously. And then we're going to flatten it down slightly and then twirl it from there, so that's going to give a different tentacle effect. Place the tentacles in however way you want. Just make sure that the center is empty because we're going to be putting the cotton swab after we bake it. Now for the final one, you're going to start with the same base. Then you're going to make one snake, put them together, twist them, put it right in the center and make tentacles on different sides of the circle. Experiment with as many different shapes and sizes that you'd like. But since my mold is small, I'm going to keep them tiny. Now bake these for 7 minutes at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. Make sure that your oven was preheated. Now mix your resin according to your package's instructions. Now before you pour your resin in the mold, put one drop of food coloring. If you want your water to be darker than this, go ahead and put in one more drop. I like this tone better. Now pour your resin in your mold. Now we're going to let this sit for about 4 hours before we actually put in the jellyfish. That way, the jellyfish is not at the bottom of the actual tank, but floating straight in the middle. Once your resin is hard enough, but still very slightly sticky, place your jellyfish in the way that you want them to be. Now let them sit for another two hours. Once you've let it dry for a couple of hours, mix in a second batch of resin. Now before we pour the resin, take a small piece of your cotton, pinch it slightly, and put it underneath the dome of the jellyfish that has the twirly tentacles. Don't put any food coloring in your second layer of resin. That way the only blue is going to come from the background. As you can see, this one has the second layer with no coloring. This one has the second layer with coloring. Now we're going to let them cure overnight. Now that they've cured overnight, you can definitely see the difference between the one that has the actual food coloring on the second coat and the one that doesn't. Now remove them from the mold and the bubbles in there are just perfect because it really gives them an undersea look. So you don't want to blow out your bubbles, you want them to kind of still look like there are particles floating around. Now for the contour of your tank, flatten out a piece of black clay, put one at the bottom and one on top, 
and then cut out the shape that you want it to be. With your cutter, make it an even border. Here's the bottom part. Now do the same thing for the top. Now take your rubbing alcohol and Q-tip and smooth out the black part. Now bake in the oven at 200 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. And yes, you can bake resin as long as it's really low temperatures and for a short amount of time. All done! Now if this isn't the coolest miniature jellyfish tank, I don't know what is. What's your favorite water creature? It could be salt water or none. Does the Loch Ness monster count? Now don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and share. If you have suggestions for future geeky tutorials, leave them in the comment section below. And don't forget to add me on Tumblr, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Until then, I will see you guys next week.